All right, so you just landed a client for your agency, you collected payment from them, but what now? I'm gonna share with y'all my client onboarding checklist of everything you'll need from a client to get them set up and go high level and just any other services you're offering them. Once you've created the sub account for your client, it's either automated if you sent them one of the links from your SaaS configurator, if they paid through one of these links right here inside of your SaaS configurator to automatically create their sub account, and you'll see a sub account here that's been automatically created. It'll be first name, last name, account. So whatever the person's name is, John Smith's account. And then you can go through and you can give them access. You'll have to toggle it on to turn it on. It won't be active by default. You'll have to go in and toggle it on. Or if you're on the 297 plan with Go High Level, you'll have to manually create the sub account by going here click and create sub account, going through the process of creating the sub account and do it that way. But once the sub account's been created, let's say it's this sub account right here, you'll then need to make sure they have access to the sub account. If you're on the 497 plan, like I said, and you send them the link from the SaaS configurator or product from there, it'll automatically send them their username and password once you toggle on their account and activate it. But if you're on the 297 plan and doing this, you can still give them access. You'll just have to go into the settings here go to my staff, and then you can add them in as a staff member, as an employee, put in all their information, first name, last name, email, phone number, click advance. You can create a password for them um, and just set up all their permissions. Make sure they are getting permission to what you promised them here in the settings. And then user roles, make sure they're the admin of the sub account, which you'll also be an admin of the sub account because you're the agency admin, but they'll be the admin of the sub account and then you can hit save and save all that information. It'll automatically then email them from your agency email and it'll say, here's your username, here's your password, here's access to log in. So all that's automated, you don't have to set anything up for that. All right, so first up on our list of things that we're gonna need from our client is gonna be their first name, their last name, and their email address. And then under general info, we're gonna need their business name. This is gonna be their friendly business name, just whatever people call them or whatever they go by normally. We're gonna need their business address, city, the country they're located in, the niche in which they're in, their state, their zip code, their phone number of their business, their website if they have one already. If they don't have a website published, you can put their domain right here if they bought a domain already, and then their time zone. And then once we filled all of that information in, we can click save. This is all the initial information we're gonna need from them in order to create their sub account inside of Go High Level. Next up, once you're actually inside of their sub account that you've created for them, you're gonna go under settings and then business profile, and right here, you'll wanna plug in their legal business name. Some businesses will go by a friendly business name that's different from their legal business name. Their legal business name might have like LLC on the end, but they don't go by that normally for their clients to call them that. So you also need to make sure to put in their legal business name with like LLC or incorporated on the end or whatever type of business they are. Make sure to go through all of this information on this page here and fill this in for your client. You can do this with them on a Zoom call, or you could do this for them if you have all this information from them in the first place. Make sure you've asked them for all this different information. If they wanna have a custom voicemail connected to their phone number inside of the software, they can record that and send that to you here, and you could upload that as an MP3 file. Make sure all their business physical address information is correct here. Authorized representative, make sure to add in whoever is gonna be the admin of this account. Under general info here, I like to toggle this one off, and so you just click it, check the three boxes, disable it and then type confirm and then disable the opt-out that just adds an opt-out message on every text message that sends out it's really annoying it looks very inorganic doesn't look like an actual text it looks like an automated text so we like to take that one off and then this one make sms compliant by sending a sender information i like to toggle that off as well that'll basically sign every text that you send as business name at the end and that's also pretty annoying you don't want to do that it just looks inorganic so we're going to disable this one as well confirm that right here and then down here make sure you've set up missed call text back by default it'll have this message hi this is business name i saw that we just missed your call how can i help you can change this to whatever the customer wants it to be and so if they miss a call that's called through the go high level phone number it'll automatically text that lead or that customer with this custom message right here. So you can change that to whatever they want. I typically recommend doing an onboarding call for like 30 or 45 minutes and getting all this stuff set up with your client just so that there's no miscommunication of what they want versus what you put in. The next thing you wanna do for them right away, either on your own or on an onboarding call with them is getting them A2P registered. This is a new law in the US and Canada where each client has to have a registered phone number. They have to go through this process of filling out this information on a form and then it sends into some governmental body in the US and Canada, they review it. And so a few things we're gonna need for this, if we click start registering now, we're gonna need their tax ID number. So we're gonna select, yes, this business I'm registering has a tax ID, because most businesses you work with will. There'll be like an EIN or an incorporation or something like that. 
Then you'll hit continue. And then on this page, it'll ask for their legal business name. That's why we need their legal business name along with their friendly business name. Because if you submit their friendly business name right here, like, like let's say their business name is Lead Connector Incorporated, but they just go by Lead Connector as their friendly business name. If you don't put the ink on the end, it'll get kicked back and your A2P registration will get denied. So you need to make sure it has like the LLC on the end or the incorporated on the end so that the governing body will actually approve it. And then right here is where you'll put that EIN, that employment identification number, and just make sure that's correct. If you mess up right there, it'll also kick back and deny your registration. So make sure this is correct. This is correct. These are the two biggest problems that I see with A2P is that the legal business name and the registration number, the EIN number don't match up or they're incorrect. Another important thing to mention before you do this, you'll need to have some sort of published page connected to their domain that has a privacy policy and a terms and conditions of how these phone numbers that you collect through your website are gonna be used. And if you, once you type in your website right here, if you don't have that terms and conditions or privacy policy page already built out, then your A2P can also get denied. So make sure you have a terms and conditions page, a privacy policy page, which if you go into the website builder inside of high level right here, there are plenty of website templates already here that have a terms and conditions and privacy policy page that you can steal, or you could go find one online. Just make sure to spin up a quick website for them inside of high level. It doesn't even have to be a full website, just a privacy policy page and a terms and conditions page. Make sure to connect their domain to it, and then you can submit that with A2P, and then that'll also make sure it gets approved. Under the Trust Center, once your A2P campaign that you filled out with your customer has been verified and approved, we can then go and buy your customer a phone number. Each phone number is around a dollar and 15 cents per month. And so we can click add number right here, add phone numbers. We can go to United States. If we're in the US, we can click filters right here and we can filter off toll freaks. Maybe they want an actual local number. Toll free numbers, by the way, the process of getting approved is a lot easier. You don't have to go through the whole A2P registration. It has a simple registration process they can get approved a lot quicker. So if your client needs to send text right away, you can just get them a toll free number and be approved within a day or two but most people want a local number. And so we can type in our area code, my area code's 208. And then I can put first part of number right here and I can click apply and it'll find me a bunch of 208 numbers in Idaho where I'm located. It looks like all the 208 numbers for some reason are taken. You can click refresh a couple times. Sometimes that'll help and it'll finally pull in some numbers. But if not, you may have to change your area code. I'm gonna do 385 and try that one. Make sure it says first part of the number because those are the first three digits is your area code. I'm gonna click apply 385 number. As you can see, it pops up with a bunch of 385 numbers now that I can use. And sometimes if you come back later and try the 208 again or the first number that you tried, there will be some that pop up. It's just kind of hit or miss whether there are available numbers in certain area codes or not that have bigger populations of people using these numbers. But anyway, you can find a number that's easy to remember, one that you like, one that your client likes, hit proceed to buy. And then you'll have that phone number that your client can text people from, make calls from, you can shoot automated text with it as well. In order to hook up a client's domain, you're gonna need access to wherever they purchase their domain if your client hasn't bought a domain yet, I'd recommend them using GoDaddy. It's a really easy domain provider to use and create those DNS records so we can hook up their domain to go high level on their website. In order for your client to give you access to their GoDaddy account, they don't need to give you their username and password. We can avoid that. They can go into their GoDaddy account or really any other account that they have with Google domains, Namecheap, HostGator, all of them are very similar. They can go in. I just clicked on manage my products. I clicked on this domain, clicked manage. And then down here, if we go over to settings, we can go to delegate access. And I can give somebody delegate access for up to like 48 or 72 hours to this domain that they can come in and they can mess with my DNS record. So your client can go in and do this for you. You could jump on a call with them and show them how to do this. But basically we can go over here, we can click invite to access and we can type in somebody's name and email. And then we can give them access to our domain to manage our DNS records and other settings. If you're planning on building a website for your clients, you're going to need a few things from them in order to fully build out that website. I like to set good expectations with my clients and tell them it's going to take 14 days to build their entire website out. We're going to be back and forth with them throughout those 14 days and we're going to make sure it's exactly how they want it. But we are going to need some things. We can't just build a website without some resources for them. So first, we're going to need their logo. I'm just here inside of a Go High Level website template, but we're going to have to put their logo on it somewhere. Another thing is images. If they have images of their locations or services that they offer that they want to include on the website, they're going to have to send all of those to us as well. If they have any specific paragraphs of text that they want to include, on the website, they're gonna to need to send us that information, any videos that they want on the site as well, and then just any other graphics like these right here that they wanna include. 
If they have that kind of stuff, great. A lot of businesses that I've worked with don't really have a lot of this stuff. They might just have the logo and a few images. And so they let me bring my creativity to the table and build the website as I see fit. Um, but other clients will be very nitpicky and want to send you all this different stuff to put on the website. And so either way is fine. Another service you might offer to your clients is going to be Facebook and Instagram ads, which you're going to need access to their Facebook business profile. I'm inside of my business profile right here. I'm inside of my settings. So you're just going to go to business.facebook.com go to settings, you could type in this link that you see up here to get to this area. And then once you're in here, you can invite people to join your Meta Business Manager by clicking here. You have to be friends with them first on Facebook. You have to act, you have to send them a friend request. Then you could type in their email here, they'll pop up. You can assign them certain access. Just going through the steps here and then invite them. It'll give them access when they log into their business manager and they can edit different things and run ads for you on your behalf. So this is what you're gonna need access to from your clients so that you can run ads on their behalf inside of their account with their card information, charging them directly so that they don't have to send you their username and password. If you plan on running Google ads for your client, you'll need access to their Google ads manager. So once they're inside of their ads manager, they can go to ads.google.com and then they can go into their admin settings right here and then they can go to access and security. Inside of access and security, they can click the plus sign right here and they can add in your email and they can give you access to different things inside of their Google Ads Manager so you can run ads on their behalf without having to get their username and password to their account. Also as part of the onboarding process, I like to go through this with my clients just so I don't have to get their username and password to all these different accounts. They can connect their Google Business Suite right here under the Launchpad tab and basically they'll just have to put in their username and password to this account. And so I like to have them do this so I don't have to ask them for their username and password on an onboarding call is the best way to do it in my opinion. The Facebook account as well, they'll also be prompted to log in with their username and password, which we don't wanna get from them. That's really, that's sensitive information for most people. And so, so you can just have them do this as well. And then down here at the bottom, we can quickly add one or more team members. We can click add right here and we can type in the different emails of the employees of this business of our client and they can send them out in bulk to everybody. It'll send them an email and it'll say, you can create your account with Webjuice or whatever your white label is, whatever your white label domain is up here and it'll prompt them to create a password to log into the account so they can start using the software as well as your main client who's the admin over the account. And then inside of our client sub account under the settings, under the integrations tab, we have some other things that they can connect if needed. Not everybody's gonna wanna connect their Google profile or their Facebook and Instagram necessarily or QuickBooks. Some of these different integrations that are native through Go High Level, but if they do want to connect these and if this is something that you're offering to them and just make sure you go through this right here with them and have them connect these so that everything's working properly. Something else that's pretty important under their sub account, if you're offering database reactivation or any Google reviews reactivation where you're going to help them get a lot of Google reviews from their previous client base that they have already, you're going to have to have them send you a CSV file with all of their previous customers, names, emails, and phone numbers. So then inside of their sub account under contacts, we can go to import contacts right here and we can import all those contacts through a CSV file. So then we can start doing database reactivation, trying to get more revenue back into the business from old customers, and also trying to get more Google reviews through those old customers. This is something you'll need to do with them in order for you to start doing these kind of campaigns. When setting up your client's calendar, you'll need to know their calendar availability so that you're making sure their, their clients can't book in times that they're not available. So we're going to go to calendar settings right here. This is all inside their sub account. Let's say this is their calendar right here that you created for them. You're going to go to edit you're gonna go into availability and you can set up the times that they have available for appointments. And then lastly, underneath their sub account under the mobile app tab, they can go in and they can access the mobile app where they can also log in and use the software from their phone. You're gonna to wanna to make sure they have access to this. This makes it really easy for your clients to use the software so they don't have to log in on the computer every time. They can just do a lot of it from their phone, like message with people back and forth, send those Google review requests, see all their appointments, et cetera. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've copied this link and sent this out to them or just showed them on your onboarding call how they can do it themselves and they can go to this mobile app tab they can copy the link here and they can also send invites to their team members in their company to also download the mobile app and start using it as well. Another thing to mention is when you create a sub account for a client, your email, your agency email will be the default sending email for their sub account. If you want to give them their own email sending domain, you can click dedicated domains. You can go into their GoDaddy account or Google Domains account or wherever they have their domain hosted. You can click add domain here and you can create their own. So there could be like info.clients website.com, whatever their domain is right here, you can create them their own sending domain. So they're not using your domain. 
Because if you have a ton of clients all using your domain, they can mask over it with whatever email they want, but the true sending domain is still gonna be yours. And if they're sending tons of emails, can actually hurt your email deliverability for you. And so you may wanna have your clients set up their own email sending domain right here. Click add and verify, and then go through the process of adding in. There's five DNS records. There's two MX records, two TXT records, a C name and a DMARC record. And so you can click add records manually, or if you're using GoDaddy or one of the more popular domain registrars, you can click continue and it may create them automatically for you. This doesn't always work with every domain registrar, so you may have to add them manually here. But like I said, it's just these five records and then you can click verify records. Then they'll have their own email hooked up to the software to send their own emails out on their own sending domain. Like I said, they can mask over it with another email if they don't want it to look like info clientswebsite.com that it's sending from. They can mask over with John at you know, clientswebsite.com, whatever they want to make it look like to the receiver, the person receiving the email. But this is something you may want to consider if you think your client is going to be sending a ton of emails. Just get them their own email sending domain so it doesn't mess with yours. Also a pro tip for closing clients easier that I think is good to mention in this video. Even though we're talking more about onboarding, this closing tip also ties in with onboarding. I charge my clients half of the setup fee at the beginning and I charge them the other half after I've onboarded them, set up their website because I build websites for all my clients. So after the website's done, it usually takes me about a week to 14 days to build out their website. That's when I charge them the second half. So I usually charge $2,000 total. I charge $1,000 up front. So that's what I'm collecting from them on day one through a payment link. And then the second half I charge after the website set up, after their account is set up. And then that's also the same day that I start charging them their monthly subscription. On average, I charge $197 per month for that subscription. So I charge them the second half, $1,000 that day and the 197 per month that same day. And then they're just gonna be charged the 197 every month from then on out. It makes it a lot easier to close clients this way because you're not charging them the full $2,000 up front. So that's harder to stomach for a lot of small businesses. You're saying, hey, we're just charging you half today. The second half will charge you later once the website's perfect, once everything's set up, dialed in perfectly the way that you want it, then we'll charge you the second half. It just makes it a little bit easier to push people forward and actually buy from you on the first call. I put this entire checklist on a Google document down below that you can access completely free. So you don't have to rewatch this video. You can just check that out down below. And if you haven't started your agency, but you're looking to start, you can get my free website SaaS masterclass down below. Walks you through step-by-step on how to build websites for businesses and give them the software tied to the website, charging a monthly subscription and a setup fee. I just had to get everything set up, get clients and onboard clients. Also, if you haven't started using Go High Level yet or if you're using it already, but you're looking to upgrade to the 297 plan or the 497 plan, you can go to my affiliate link down below and sign up or you can upgrade through my link and you can get all my free resources. You can book two free Zoom calls with me a week and I can help you out with anything in your agency. I appreciate y'all sticking through to the end of this video. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.